today's video, we will be looking at the recently approved Medical Doctor Apprenticeship Scheme or program to become a medical doctor. Yes, you heard me correctly. In recent years, there have been discussions around constructing an apprenticeship scheme for those who want to study medicine and become a doctor, but may not have the financial capabilities to do so. The scheme has also been introduced because traditionally students from poorer socioeconomic backgrounds and certain ethnicities are not well represented at medical school. So in this video, I will discuss exactly what the medical doctor degree apprenticeship entails, for example, how it will work, what the entry requirements are, if it will include a medical degree and some pros and cons. and welcome back if you are new then a warm welcome to you my name is dr baptiste and i currently work as a portfolio gp on this channel you will find lots of useful content to support you on your medical journey you will find something of use to you whether you are an aspiring medic medical student or doctor as always if you enjoy the video be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with new videos okay so let's take a look at the program itself on the 19th of july this year the institute for apprenticeships and technical education approved the delivery of the apprentice standard this means that institutions such as gmc approved medical schools can start putting plans in place regarding the practicalities of the program so how it will be delivered however the program may not start until next year september 2023 the Education and Skills Funding Agency, or ESFA, has not allowed starts on the apprenticeship. This is dependent on a suitable endpoint assessment organisation, or EPAO, committing to deliver assessments. Once this has happened, the EFSA will need to sign the seal of approval and then the programme is good to go. There is a lot of information on the Institute for Apprenticeships and technical education website and if you want to check it out the link will be in the box below this video on the website you will find a few things such as an overview of the role which includes an occupation summary this details where apprentices can work and this includes the nhs so hospitals and gp surgeries universities both in teaching and research research institutes, public health, local authorities, industries such as the pharmaceutical and biotechnology industries, in addition to the voluntary and private sectors. Entry requirements and qualifications, which will be agreed between the employer and the medical school, according to the Institute's website. However, on the Health Education England website, the academic entry requirements are stated to be the same as the conventional route. The website also includes the assessment plan, which includes more information about how the program will be assessed. Health Education England also provide some more information about the program on their website too. The program is five years in duration and there would be 100 spaces available. Although there are no specifics regarding pay, apprentices might be paid anywhere between just over £4 to almost £9, depending on their age and year of the program. Those interested and eligible can apply via the NHS Jobs website as well as job boards at individual employers. Once the program is complete to a satisfactory level, then the apprentice can go on to apply to the foundation program. Right, so now we know a bit more about the program, let's take a look at some of the arguments for and against this new scheme. The BMA and the Doctors' Association UK, among other individuals and organisations, have expressed some concerns about the programme and I will be summarising some of these points now. The workforce crisis and service provision. The programme is meant to help with the current issues that we have within the NHS regarding the recruitment and retention of doctors. However, there are concerns about using this program as a way to tackle the complex and plethora of issues that exist around recruiting and retaining doctors. I have spoken about this topic in several videos and I'm sure many of you who are currently working in the NHS see some of these issues such as lack of staffing on a daily basis. 
Will the apprentices be used as service provision? I remember as a trainee, ever since my first day as an F1 to my last day as a GP trainee, I always felt deep down that I was being used simply as a service provider. For many times my teaching was compromised because there were not enough staff members to cover for me or a patient became unwell and I could not hand over. Of course, patient safety is paramount and comes first, and this is how it should be. But one could also argue that if you don't get the teaching or training that you require, this also puts patient safety into question. The BMA suggests that the apprenticeships will have a limited impact in solving the issues within the NHS, and they believe that more medical school places should be made available instead. They also add that there has not been any information with regards to the total number of medical school places. Will the places in the apprenticeship programme be additional or included in the current cap placed on medical school places made by the government? A focus on primary care. The Doctors' Association UK are strongly opposed to the programme, with their members voting against it. They state that the programme will have a strong focus on primary care, which can place even more pressure on GP surgeries and trainers. Similarly, hospital consultants provide a significant amount of clinical training and they are also stretched, which brings into question if there will be adequate levels of supervision. Widening participation. As mentioned earlier, despite many widening participation incentives delivered by medical schools, charities and other organisations, there still remains a disparity between the number of students from poorer socio-economic backgrounds and certain ethnicities such as Black Caribbean students and those from more privileged backgrounds applying to and being accepted into medical school. HEE state in their FAQs document, which can be found on their website, that they are aware the majority of medical students come from a small section of society. So what they are trying to say is that the majority of medical students come from a privileged background and that there are many individuals who are quite bright and can meet the entry requirements to get into medical school, but they do not have the funds to do so. They go on to say that there has been some success with other similar degree apprentice courses too. Furthermore, the government will be providing funding for delivery of the programme of up to £27,000. Other costs will be met by the employer and these costs could be anywhere upwards of £25,000. Another key point here is also that those from certain backgrounds may not know exactly what they have to do and may not have the connections in place to be able to meet the entry requirements of the traditional route into medicine. For example, it is very difficult to gain work experience in a hospital if you do not have an internal connection in some shape or form. The work experience placements run by hospitals are always oversubscribed to. So the employer will be able to employ those from underrepresented backgrounds working in posts that may be difficult to fill and ensuring that the healthcare profession represents or mirrors the community that it serves. The complexity of this program. Some may welcome the more hands-on approach and the opportunity to apply their skills as soon as they start their training. HEE state that the students on this program will complete exactly the same training as a medical student following the traditional route. However, there are many factors to take into consideration. For one, the medical degree itself can be intense. And for those of you that work or have worked alongside your medical degree, you know how challenging this can be. Some of you may not have had a choice. You may have needed to work to fund your studies. Whilst the programme is trying to solve this issue of expensive university fees, it can be hard to work alongside your studies, especially a medical degree. Can the programme support apprentices fully and ensure the same standards of traditional medical schooling can be met? The Doctors' Association are worried about the programme producing inadequately trained doctors. A flexible programme. The programme does allow other NHS staff to apply via a new route to become a doctor. HEE state that both new and existing staff members can apply, which might encourage those who might be allied healthcare professionals who already know much about how the NHS works to apply, whilst also ensuring they continue to earn a salary. 
It also allows those individuals who may not be able to attend university full time another way to become a doctor. A two-tiered system. One could argue that the apprentices may be looked down upon or as not good enough because they have not completed their traditional training via a medical degree versus an integrated degree. If you remember, there was a similar perception to the introduction of physician associates and some of these perceptions still exist to this day. If you want to know more about PAs, then check out this earlier video. The Doctors' Association UK states that it is unlikely that the same level of competence will be gained because of the significant amount of time they will spend working, i.e. being service providers. So that is a summary of the programme and some important points to consider. Now, what do you think of the programme? Do you think it is a good idea or do you think other options should be sought like even more medical schools and medical school places? Let me know in the comments section below. As always, if you enjoyed the video and gained value from it, then be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more of the same. I will see you in the next one.